Welcome to the Crystal Clear Electronics Studio as we continue our second season. Today we present chapter 12, where we will learn about digital to analog conversion. I am Gergely Satmári, a bachelor's student at the Budapest University of Technology, and I am with Zalán Gyurica, a master's student at the same university. He is the presenter for this chapter. Hi, that's right. Today we will talk about the DA conversion. First, we'll look at what these digital to analog converters are and what they can be used for. Then, we'll discuss how they work and what their internal structure is. And at the end of today's chapter, we'll try out the DA converter of a microcontroller. We'll generate a fixed voltage and we'll also use it to create a sine wave. This will be the most interesting part, so stay tuned until the end of the chapter. You can find the written version of what we discussed in the video on our website, crystalclearelectronics2.eu. Feel free to browse that as well. However, please note that the hardware used in the video will be different from the hardware used in the written curriculum. This is because the Nucleo Development Board, shown in the video, is much easier to obtain. You can see it on the table here. That's why we encourage you to get the development board and do the exercises with us. Let's get started. This chapter was written by Viktor Vince and Gábor Baracsi and proofread by Máté Prensberger. Let's get started. Zalán, you have the floor. Thanks, Gergő. You've already heard about analog to digital converters in the previous lessons. You can already digitize analog signals. However, the world is not digital and to make these signals perceptible to humans and the world again, digital to analog conversion is required. So digital to analog conversion is the link between the digital world and the analog world, which has been around since the advent of processors but has only become widely available in the last two to three decades with the advent of monolithic DACs integrated on a single silicon crystal. DACs are therefore devices that receive a digital signal, for example an 8-bit number, as input and produce a corresponding analog value at the output, most often a certain voltage level. DACs have a wide range of applications, some with an obvious digital to analog conversion function at first glance, others where you must dig deeper to discover their role. One of the most obvious examples, which everyone has come across, is music. Once the sound recordings are made in the studio, they are edited by audio engineers and then the digital copies are ready for distribution. However, this is not audible because the sound is stored in digital format but to be consumable, the digital representation must be converted back into sound. The next example is video, which has many similarities to the previous point. That's right. To display movies stored or streamed in digital format, it is necessary to convert the video signals from digital to analog. For example, if a VGA connector is used, the digital to analog conversion is already done in the computer so you could measure analog signals on the VGA cable. However, modern monitor connections are generally digital now. For example, HDMI processes the digital signals inside the monitor, converting them into analog signals, which then can be used to display the image on the screen. The HDMI to VGA converter on the table also includes a DA converter, converting the digital HDMI signal to analog VGA. In fact, on the side of the gadget, you can see the audio output, which is also generated from the HDMI signal by a suitable logic and a DA converter connected to it. Besides, in some monitoring systems, the ADC digitalizes the analog signals to be measured and then passes them to the microcontroller for processing. The controller then sends a signal calculated from the measured value to the unit, which converts it back to an analog signal. In fact, most digital potentiometers are also based on DEX. These pot meters have some kind of digital interface, usually I2C. Besides these, of course, DACs are used in many other areas. Only a few typical examples are given here. The main point is that DACs convert a digital input value, in practical terms, a numeric value, into an analog signal. Now, Let's look at the main features of digital to analog converters. 
The first is the output range. The output range is the difference in voltage or current between the maximum and minimum output signals of a DAC. The second is the resolution. The basic unit of the resolution is the bit. In practical terms, this means the change in output value, that is the change in the output voltage or current resulting from the change of the least significant bit in the input, called the LSB. For example, the output range of an 8-bit DAC has 255 parts, which is 2 to the power of 8 minus 1, so the resolution is 1 255th part of the output range. The third is the maximum sample rate. The maximum sample rate is the maximum rate at which the DAC can produce an output that still meets the specification. Trying to control the DAC faster than this would result in a different signal shape than expected. The fourth is the offset error. The figure on the screen illustrates the offset error. The vertical axis shows the digital input code of the DAC represented on three bits, and the horizontal axis shows the analog output value. The offset error is the difference between the ideal and actual output when the digital input is zero. It can be clearly seen that the real output signal deviates from the ideal line by 1.5 LSB for input code 000. The simplest way to compensate for this error is to measure the output value for the digital input 0, then back calculate this to a digital value and subtract it from the other input codes. Next is the gain error. This figure illustrates the gain error. The gain error is the difference between the ideal and the real output value after correcting for the offset error at the maximum digital input value. Since the slopes of the two lines are different, it can be seen that the difference between the ideal and the real output will be largest at the maximum input. Now let's look at DNL, which stands for the English term differential nonlinearity. Ideally, if the digital input is increased by 1, the output should increase by 1 LSB. The deviation from 1 LSB is the DNL. The figure shows that the analog output, which is the x-axis, does not change proportionally as a function of the digital input, that is the y-axis. For every unit change in input, there is not exactly one LSB change in output signal. The extent of the deviation is given in the DNL. In the extreme case, a monotonicity error may occur, meaning that if a higher value of a digital input code is given, the analog output value will decrease. The next parameter is the settling time, which specifies the time it takes to set the steady state value within plus or minus one LSB error at the output when changing the digital input from minimum to maximum. We can also talk about the switching transient. When the input value is changed, undesirable spikes appear in the output signal caused by switching the DAX switches non-simultaneously. We will talk more about these switches in the DAC types chapter. This figure illustrates the switching transient. Even though an ideal digital sine wave is applied to the input, undesirable transients appear in the analog sine wave measured at the output when several local values change simultaneously. The next feature is the signal to noise ratio, or SNR for short. The signal to noise ratio is the ratio of the useful signal at the output to the noise. Since the different physical magnitudes of signal and noise generally vary by several orders of magnitude, this ratio is determined on a logarithmic scale measured in decibels. It is determined by measuring the power of the useful signal and noise using the following formula. The SNR in decibels is equal to 10 times the log base 10 of P signal over P noise. However, if we want to calculate with the amplitude of the signal and the noise, we must use the following equation. The SNR measured in decibels is equal to 20 times the log base 10 of A signal over A noise. Among the errors described earlier, the application decides which ones can be compromised. For DACs used in audio applications, high resolution, 24-bit resolution is common, and minimum distortion are important, 
and the sampling rate is low, usually up to 192 kHz. While DAC is used for video focus on speed, for example those used in mobile phones can have a sampling rate of several gigahertz and a resolution of up to 16 bits. A DAC integrated into a microcontroller can be used for a wide range of tasks and simplifies the design process by eliminating the need for a discrete DAC. For each electronic component, we can speak of discrete implementations, meaning requiring separate circuit elements or integrated implementations, which means within a single circuit element. Typical applications for integrated DACs are the control of small motors, the generation of calibration signals for sensors, or, with some compromises, the playback of audio files. Depending on the application, there are a number of DAC types to choose from. There is no one that is best in all aspects because there are parameters that are optimized in opposite ways. Resolution and maximum sampling rate are good examples, so always choose a deck based on the task at hand. In the following video, we'll start by looking at the different types of DACs and when to use them. That's right, stay tuned. See you in the next video. Bye! Bye.